Okay, so now we are switching gears from looking at a vertical difference in pressure to a horizontal difference in pressure. We're going to come back to that vertical difference in pressure here in just a little bit. But so horizontal differences in pressure would mean that if this is the Earth's surface, we are talking about some sort of maybe high pressure over here for some reason and some sort of low pressure over here for some reason. And um, what I kind of introduced chapter 6 in, it, the reason we're so concerned about pressures is actually that's what creates our movement of air we call wind. Okay. Um, wind is created by air wanting to move from high pressure to low pressure. So horizontal differences in pressure, how do they come about? Well, they can, like this point says, um, I'll talk about the three ways that we get these possibly differences in horizontal pressure, but they have certain consequences. They create wind, and actually they can be um, have other consequences in our severe weather, regular precipitation. Okay. So one way to get a difference between um, the pressure of air horizontally would be differences in temperatures. So as it turns out, not so surprising that um, maybe, maybe not. If we have a chunk of air that is relatively warm, and I'll isolate this chunk of air, it's relatively warm, then it tends to have a low pressure. Okay, And we can think of it as, as it's warmer, those little gas particles have more kinetic energy and they kind of fluff out. And as they fluff out, the density it basically is, has low density down here. If we compare that to cold air, cold air, um, it, the kinetic energy is slower, and so they kind of crunch together. So if we were to, to look down here, um, at this chunk of air kind of close to the ground, it's all squished together. It has high density, and we know that it has um, a relatively speaking high pressure. So now we have described a situation in which, um, again, we're talking about horizontal, so I'll kind of show this is kind of two horizontal chunks of air. So in general, there'll be a wind that can be created from cold air to warm air, from high pressure to low pressure. Well, another way we can have chunks of air that have different, um, that have different, different uh, pressures horizontal pressures, is that if these chunks of air have different moisture contents. So I know this does not sound, this sounds counterintuitive, but if I have a chunk of air that's relatively moist, that means I have a lot of cute little H2O molecules in there. And one of the things about H2O molecules is that they weigh less. I'll go ahead and show you, I don't know if you believe me, but if I was to take the water molecule, it would weigh 18.02. Um, it's really uh, a light unit of weighing a molecule, and 18.02 AMUs or atomic mass units. So that's pretty light. If we compare that to a nitrogen gas molecule, which is 28.02 AMUs. So I know it doesn't sound right, but moist air will tend to have a low pressure. And I'll go ahead and draw my chunk of air over here that is dry. Go ahead and put some little dots here. If it's dry, then it has, um, you know, most of those dots are nitrogen and not water vapor. And so it is going to have a high pressure. Okay, so then we have uh, chunks of air that are at the same elevation. And if it's dry, it's going to tend to have create a high pressure that's going to go towards the moist air. Pressure, um, pressure will always is pressure is always directed from high to low. The third way we can get chunks of air on the ground that have uh, different pressures is if the air is moving. If it's moving towards a central point or it's moving away from a central point. Diverging air would be, and I've recently thought of this kind of analogy, if I'm standing here and 
and I'm playing a game with a bunch of kids and I say at the count of three, scatter, that would mean they are all diverging. At the count of three, one, two, three, scatter. Okay. What that's going to do where I'm standing is to create a low pressure. That's what happens when air is diverging from a location. Diverging. If moving air. If we compare that to um, air that is converging, now converging would we, we would play the game where at the count of three, one, two, three, everybody come to me. And so all the, I could have candy or something like that. In that case, the uh, situation is we call converging, and that creates a high pressure where that air is moving to. So again, you know, if this is at the same elevation, what we have created with converging air is a high pressure, and what we've created with diverging air is a low pressure. So we would have what we call a pressure gradient force or an impetus for wind to move from that high to low pressure. So I'm going to bring up, hopefully, <laughs> some uh, pressure maps. And uh, maybe I'll just use IntelliCast. Um, and remember we talked about contour lines. And we said that they were lines on a weather map that connected um, locations of the same um, of some sort of parameter, whether it's temperature or wind speed or pressure, um, all those locations have the same condition. So, um, let's see. Okay, so let's take a look at IntelliCast, hopefully. <laughs> and um, you know, all sorts of choices here with regard to weather maps. We, I have pulled up what we call a mixed analysis. And that's because we're getting our analysis of our numbers from all sorts of different sources. You might see kind of that characteristic yellow and green. That actually comes from radar. You might see kind of that cloud cover. That comes from satellite. And actually then um, the pressure would come from those ASOSs. So that's why they call it a mixed weather map. So let's see if you can hopefully make this out. I'm not sure you can. There's kind of dim lines. And on this line, right below the word Minneapolis, is 1,016. Now that's 1,016 millibars. And that line, if you could see it, is actually an isobar. So all locations on that line have a standardized pressure of 1,016 millibars. Now if I go inwards underneath the word Chicago, there's actually kind of a line that goes kind of from north to south. And that is another isobar, and it's a higher number. It's 1,024 millibars. So based upon kind of what we've been talking about, we kind of have a high pressure going um, from, I guess, kind of going towards the west, don't we? Okay, so that is um, the kind of another look, again, at what we call isobaric or isobars, this um, map to show um, the pressure across the United States.